Hello, vinyl community, music community, and people of the world. Yes, cheers to you. Hopefully I'm recording this on the, the right channel this time. <laughs> Uh, I tried to do this this live video earlier, uh, like this afternoon, and hey Tom, <laughs> yeah, I tried to do this live video uh, earlier today, and I realized I was I was on my wrong channel. Um, yeah, so <laughs> so that was kind of funny, but uh, uh, let's see here. Sorry, I'm trying to get to my. How do I get to it? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, oh, excellent, excellent. How are you, Matt? <laughs> You'll be listening in shortly. Um, <laughs> yes, I I found... Oh, you left Joe's stream for this? Wow. I, I think that's one reason I was getting discouraged with with live videos. Well, yeah, it is an owl mug, actually. It is. Um, uh, you know, I can't compete with him. And, you know, he's always having his live videos. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so I have a, a curiosity item here. Um, I stopped at the uh, downtown library here in Riverside, and I hadn't been there in a long time. I I was primarily looking for books, and that's primarily what I found. Um, but uh, I did find this very interesting record, which I'll show in a moment. And I I also found this this CD. Um, so the CD is pretty cool. Um, 20 Bluegrass Originals Instrumentals. Um, I, I love instrumental music. Um, it's kind of a shame it's not more popular, but lyrics and singing are just so easy for people to latch on to that, you know, of course this could be more popular, but I, I really enjoy um, instrumental music. So instrumental bluegrass, that's pretty cool. Um, so we have uh, Foggy Mountain Breakdown by Flatten Scruggs, Banjo Whiz by Bill Emerson. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it, it's it's more even more of a curiosity item actually. Um, um, and Tom was asking if the record I'm gonna show is similar to uh, the one that I I posted a few videos back. Um, which was basically someone reading from a book, um, but it was interesting. Um, for his time, it was risque reading. Hey, Thumbfinger! Oh, you got into um, uh, bluegrass when when your son was a baby. Oh, there was a special on <laughs> when he would wake up at three a.m. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I I can't say I've always liked bluegrass, but the older I get, the more I appreciate different kinds of music. Um, and I, I did go through in, I think, 1987. <clears throat> 1987-88 was kind of my... I really branched out and started exploring different kinds of music, and I got into bluegrass a little bit back then. Um, you know, Bella Fleck in the Fleck Tones. Um, but I didn't get too deep into it, so... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah Glenn, Glenn Campbell, uh, not not quite uh, not quite bluegrass, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, that was Tom's Vinyl Shack saying uh, that he got into... He almost got into Glenn Campbell. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, you know, I think... Even more than than liking the uh, the type of music, it's just amazing what they can actually do with their instruments. Um, I think that's one reason I I, I appreciate in instrumental bluegrass. Um, 
But again, I, I've, I've branched out and I appreciate a lot of it now. But uh, all right. So um, I was going to read some of these, but <laughs> I was too busy talking. Um, I do want to move on to the curiosity item because when people are watching this back, they're going to, you know, they're going to want to see that fairly soon. So without further ado, let's have a drink of coffee. <laughs> Yes, I can, I can drink coffee any time of the day or night. So for 10 cents at the, at the library from their friends of the library sale, I could not pass this up. And it's in very, very good condition. So here it is. All right, so it's everything you need to know to operate a CB radio. The most complete record on CB. And then it says complete with CB dictionary, gloss, glossary, and 10 code on back cover. Which you can see there. And I'll go through those in a moment. There's some really interesting ones, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, and here, there's a, a hype, I guess a hype sticker. Um, it says free membership in the CB Club of America with purchase of this recording. <laughs> so I guess since I bought this for 10 cents, I'm now a member of the CB Club of America. <laughs> Maybe that doesn't apply anymore. And that group prob probably doesn't even exist anymore, actually. <laughs> but I just thought this was a really cool uh, um, curiosity item. Um, it's on Gateway Recordings. Yeah, so, I'm sorry, I was reading a comment there. Uh, Tom has been listening to a, a record uh, we listened to a, a while back on a live stream. Hey, Brian! Um, and, uh, <laughs> he says a couple of the songs are, are growing on him, so, uh, I think it was Vishnu's Eyes, um, yeah, so, it, again, on here, you know, it has a glossary and, and a list of some of the, co the common 10 codes, so, uh, you know, the 10 code that everybody knows, I mean, everybody, is 10-4, you know, it means, okay, message received, um, but there's there's uh, like ten one receiving poorly, uh, ten two receiving well, um, ten seven out of service leaving error, um, let's see uh, ten eleven uh, talking too quickly. <laughs> Tom just <laughs> Tom just asked why why this record exists. <laughs> Well, Tom, before you were born, uh, CBs were a popular form of communication for the hobbyist as well as the trucker. And uh, <laughs> so this this was was kind of a, a educational uh, record on on you know the the different lingo. I mean, this is still stuff that's actually still used. You know, obviously the the, the police have their their CBs. I, I, I don't know if truckers still do CBs, do they? I don't know. But anyway, but that, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much before your time, Tom. <laughs> um, oh, let's see. I know there's some good ones in here. Um, uh, 1038, ambulance needed. Um, 1046, assist motorist. Uh, 1077, negative contact. <laughs> um, 1091, talk closer to microphone. <laughs> uh, my brother Brian is, is saying uh, he knew someone in the 70s who had a CB in their station wagon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um... It was a thing back then. It really was. 
All right, they, then we have some some interesting. Uh, oh yeah, trucking culture was was huge then. Yeah, um, we have some interesting terms here. This is from sort of a, a dictionary of of terms that are used. Um, uh, Ten ninety seven donut store clothes. <laughs> That's funny. Um, all right, so there's. Uh, um, <laughs> Balonies is tires. Bean store is a restaurant. Um, some of these might be a little crude. Um, maybe I should skip by that one. Well, you know. It's for educational purposes, uh, you know. Girl is beaver. Um, let's see. Uh, there's common things like, you know, beer is brew. Eh. Uh, one of my favorites, or least favorites, as the case may be, is bumper jumper, um, which is a tailgater. I hate tailgaters. Um, <laughs> this one is hilarious. You're not going to believe what the term for an accident is. Buying an orchard. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh... <laughs> In place of a four-letter word, you can use cotton picker. <laughs> uh, that's also very dated, actually. And um, a little crude. Um, oh. Yeah, there's... Um, it, things like fog or uh, ground clouds. Um... Ah, there were some interesting ones. Oh. Um. Oh, uh, a rest area is referred to as a nap trap. <laughs> oh, man. The computer fell asleep there. Uh, let's see. This is a really interesting one. Um. A radar patrol car is referred to as a picture taker. Um, <laughs> one of my my wife's favorites for your, I'm not sure what reason <laughs> is a pedaddle. She had heard of this term apparently, although she remembered it as being pediddle, but it's pedaddle, and you'll never guess what it is. It's a car with one headlight. So, <laughs> uh, a ratchet jaw is a nonstop talker. Um, let's see. This this one is is bizarre. Hey Matt, uh, thanks for joining back. Uh, let's see. Madeline's yeah, Madeline's playing with a toy in the background there, but seat covers. Are a girl's legs. <laughs> um, shake the leaves is check for police. Um, what else? Starve the bears is don't get a ticket. I think it, there was also feed the bears, which is get a ticket. Um, Super slab is major highway. Tags, uh, I think people are kind of familiar with that one. Um, license plates. Um, a Tijuana taxi is a police car with markings. Um, oh, let's see. All right. So then there's there's um, terms for uh, um, loads and vehicles. So 
A milk truck? Do those even exist anymore? <laughs> Probably not. Um, but a, a milk truck is referred to as a baby bottle. A moving van is known as a bed bug hauler. <laughs> um, oh, let's see. Uh, a school bus is a blinkin' winkin'. An ambulance is a blood box. Um, a beverage truck is called a bottle popper. Yeah, milk trucks are something before your time. <laughs> I it it's kind of even before my time, really. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, a bucket of bolts is a truck. Uh, a poultry truck. A poultry truck is chicken chokers. Um, let's see. Oh, it's the Flintstones time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, a tanker truck is a thermos bottle. Madeline, what's the deal? <laughs> she doesn't like me doing live videos, but again, we, we're, we're showing this here. Um, <clears throat> she's, she's using a CB in her kitchen and you see the knives behind her. Oh, man. I think Madeline wants to get on this live video. Come here. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> there she is. Scraggly pup. Doggy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think milk trucks were, were probably more common in the UK. Um... I know that I know we had them here, but I I have no memory of actually seeing one though. So yeah, you have a Sharpe mix. Well, this is Madeline, and she is a Schnoodle, which is a, a Schnauzer Poodle mix. So <laughs> yeah, I guess she just wants to be held. She's she's down there. She keeps. Crying. What? <laughs> You're going stiff, girl. <laughs> there you go. Whew, yeah. Uh, anyway. Alright, so. Uh, how old is she? Uh, yeah, like. I want to say five or six. Something like that. But yeah, I. <laughs> you know, a, a curiosity item like this is, is really the last thing I needed. But I pick stuff like this up because I feel like, I mean, how many of these can there be out there? Not many, not many. So I almost feel like a museum curator <laughs> picking these items up. I'm gonna have to do a video <clears throat> where I show some, some of my curiosity items. I mean, it's all stuff I've shown before, but um, it'd be interesting to see them all together because <laughs> I think I have quite a few now. So, all right, so I showed you this CD, the Bluegrass. Um, it's a compilation. So it has like uh, Flatten Scruggs, of course. Um, that, I think that's really the, the, only, <laughs> the only one that I recognize. Um, uh, the Stanley Brothers, I've heard of them. Um, yeah, I, again, I, I, I love, um, instrumental music and, and bluegrass is definitely something I can listen to at times. So, all right. So <clears throat> now I also promised some CD finds. Um, oh, Okay. Tom, Tom is saying that uh, his curiosity items are the items in the videos of records that no one talks about. Yeah, 
I guess to me, I, I see curiosity items as like non-music items, but but if you know if that's your definition of curiosity items, that that's great. Um, yeah, but mine they're they're they don't tend to be music. I, some of them might be music. Uh, well, like going further back uh, in one of my live videos, I was I was playing a uh, uh, a record of songs that was uh, they were all about cars <laughs> and they were like some old songs you know from the 30s and i don't know that they went back to the 20s but 30s 40s maybe 50s um anyway so i i promised some cd finds also um, other than that one Arrgh. and i made a trip to uh, the Pet Adoption Center thrift shop, and um, it, they just happened to be having a 60% off sale. Um, I had intended on, on looking at their books because I'm starting to collect specific types of books now. Um, but when I, I saw it was 60% off, so I, I was like, hmm, maybe I'll look for CDs that I wouldn't ordinarily pick up there. And I I did all, what I think is a lot of blind buys, um, um, some classical music. Um, it, it's not all classical music, mind you, but the, there's there's a fair amount in there. And then I did I told myself I'm just going to focus on sealed CDs. So um, yeah. The, yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, they're all sealed actually. So, so let's get started. Um, here we have uh, Venderov and Virtuosi. Virtuosi. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you missed the sale. I did. I don't think they had other than what I'm showing. <laughs> What I'm showing here, I don't think they had a whole lot of, of new stuff. Um, I was a little disappointed by that, but some of this is stuff I had passed up before. Some of it was new, but um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so I mean, this is a blind buy. I just know it's, you know, like classical, I, I think, uh, well, it looks like violin music, actually. Violin and piano, so... Um, I'm definitely starting to focus my, my CD collecting, uh, well, my classical music collecting, I should say, with CDs. And I think I've mentioned that before. Uh, this, this should be interesting. Uh, Wyclef Jean, uh, from, um, uh, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> Oh man, Wyclef Jean. Uh, th this is presents the Carnival, featuring Refugee All Stars, uh, two Grammy nominations, including Best Rap Album, featuring Gone Till November, and it's a Best Value. Ah, uh, you you grabbed uh, some cassette drawers that they had. Um, oh yeah, I, I think I saw those. Was I at your house after that? I don't remember. Um, I I seem to remember you pointing those out to me. Um, I have like a a huge stack. Is is behind my my listening? Ah, uh, the Fujis. Is that it? I thought I said it on here somewhere, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, the Fujis. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> behind my listening chair, my, my glider, um, I have a huge stack of, of drawers. And then I have, I have uh, those suitcase-type cassette cases. Um, I have a bunch of those. I'm actually going to start a series about uh, cassettes. 
Um, just, it, I'm going to call it uh, what's in my case. And uh, instead of what's in my bag, you know, the amoeba music thing. And I'm just going to pull out one of the cases because a lot of these are things I haven't even looked at in I don't know how long. So it could be like I'm rediscovering parts of my collection of uh, cassettes. So I'm just going to pull out one of the one of the cases and just open it and go through it and see what's in there. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, I was I was happy to pick this up for a little under a dollar. Um, now again, some of these are, are, uh, uh, blind buys, uh, in fact, most of these are blind buys, uh, Philippa Giordana, Giordano, Gior, Gior, Giordano, um, it looks like, um, opera singing, yeah, um, Carnival, or Carna Carnival, Carnival, um, I believe the Brazilian um, event, um, and it has a lot of a lot of uh, guest artists on here. Um, so basically, it's a world influenced album, I guess. But you have artists like Sean Colvin, Elton John, Annie Lennox, Madonna, Bette Midler, Luciano Pavarotti, Paul Simon. Uh, Sting, James Taylor, Tina Turner, Ruben Blades, The Chieftains, um, and it's getting into more obscure ones now. <laughs> yeah, Elton John is on here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that should be interesting. And Sealed, you know, it's, it's really hard to pass up... Um, Still, still sealed items. What song is he on? Um, let's find out. Um, he does the song Abide With Me. So, um, I'm assuming that's not one of his songs. I think these are either traditional songs or... Yeah, not sure. Um, Matt is saying that 1993 was a great year for dance music, if nothing else. Oh, I see. It's, uh, someone else was saying, um, uh, Autumn Erlin, uh, was saying, sometimes I blind buy, but it has to be a title before 1993. And welcome, Autumn. I, sorry, I just now noticed, um, that you had commented. So thank you for joining me. Um... Yes, this this next one got a comment from the the lady that uh, rang up the transaction. Um, it, it, just a blind buy for me. Oh, uh, abide with me is a classic funeral hymn. Interesting, <laughs> but I picked this one up. Salty raisins. It, just a blind buy. It looks interesting. It's still sealed. Um, I one of the deciding factors on it was. Uh, you know, I looked at the instruments. So, you know, you have acoustic guitar, bass, drums, percussion, lead guitar, and fiddle. So, she inf she informed me, and I see this has a yellow dot on it now. I think she may have overcharged me for this one. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. But anyway, um, <clears throat> this apparently is a local band. Um and she she described them as a bunch of riverside old timers so that should be very interesting yeah and she says she's she's seen them perform many times at like open mic nights that sort of thing madeline's down here crying again um i'm i'm bad with you know pronouncing these these uh opera titles uh la boheme i'm going to assume that's what it is um, two CD set on, on London Records. I love me some opera. Um, this one looks probably country. Um, maybe, maybe country rock. Um, Clay Davidson, Unconditional. Again, you know, I was, I was, uh, 
Ah, it's pronounced Boem. Ah, thanks, Brian. Boem. <laughs> Boem. -a. <laughs> I like my pronunciation better. Um. Uh, it's my it's my impression that salty raisins does still perform, uh, Matt. Um, it'd be cool if we could catch one of their shows, but I don't know. It, it sounds like uh, you know it's one of those deals where you just have to be the right place at the right time. Um, supposedly they performed at the Festival of Lights, or they're going to, or something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, Clay David Clay Davidson unconditional. Um, it definitely looks like uh, country music, maybe country rock. So, um, I now this is a band I wouldn't ordinarily pick up, but it's Christmas music. So, you know what? Actually, I I think I just lied. I think I have picked them up in the past <laughs> on both uh, CD and cassette. Now it, I just drugged my own memory, but all for one, and this is. <clears throat> An all for one Christmas, so Christmas music. It has stuff like uh, Silent Night, This Christmas, uh, What Child Is This, and so on. <clears throat> um, this one looks like some uh, some blues. Uh, it is uh, Marcus Roberts Blues for the New Millennium. Yeah. <clears throat> this one has interesting artwork. Oh, Autumn says uh, she has several All for One albums, uh, but not any uh, Christmas music. Yeah, I was I was pleased to pick it up. So. Um... Yeah, I, I I do think I have them on CD and cassette. Um, what is the most blind buy in the lot? Uh, I would uh, I would probably have to say the salty raisins. I mean that. Uh, yeah, I, I other than you know the fiddle, um, I I couldn't even really tell what kind of music it was. I think she said. I could be wrong now. I, I want to say she said that, that they were bluegrass, but they only have one traditional bluegrass instrument, so I, I'm not sure. I could be wrong about that. Um, but here's one uh, combo, Cooking Out. I love the artwork on it. Um, uh, this one looks interesting because it has uh, Hammond organ, um, Wurlitzer electric pianos, Acoustic piano, <clears throat> muted trumpet, loops. So it, it sounds like probably some kind of fusion, maybe, maybe acid jazz, maybe. <clears throat> All right, one I do recognize. <laughs> uh, Sean Colvin. Um, I want to say... Uh, uh, country music? Singer-songwriter. Um, oh, yeah, the song I Swear, yeah. That, that was a good song. It was catchy. Jazz on Acid. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, blue, Bluegrass. Uh, Autumn was saying that Bluegrass generally features a group. I know because my dad collects it. That's true, and and that's one one difference bluegrass has with country music because more often than not, country music is solo artists, which I've always found interesting and and a little strange, but that's just kind of how it is. Um, but bluegrass definitely uh, groups, um, yeah, yeah. So Sean Colvin, this is whole new you. Now speaking of country, <laughs> I was I was so pleased to find this. I Blake Shelton is part of the reason I'm I'm like really back in country mode now. Um, I I started listening to some of his music after watching him on on uh, The Voice, 
And I was like, you know, I really enjoy this. So I was, I was glad to pick up his album based on the true story. And I want to say this is fairly recent. Well, 2013. So, you know, it's reasonably recent. Um, but yeah, thrilled to pick this up. Still sealed. <clears throat> now, it, I've mentioned before that I, I love the three tenors. Um, you know, uh, uh, Pavarotti, uh, Domingo, and Carreras. Um, so <laughs> I'm curious to, to hear this, this group, um, three Mo tenors. So, uh, again, sealed. And, uh, yeah, that will, that will be an interesting listen. <clears throat> um, I think more classical music here. Well, yeah, it looks like more more classical vocals, I think. Um, this is Don Byron, A Fine Line. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Really trying to expand my, my classical music collection. Um, <clears throat> Oh, I guess one is not sealed. The, this one is, though. Um, <clears throat> uh, John Lewis, Evolution 2. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, he had another blind buy for me. Um, looking at it now, and I, I think I... I questioned it a little bit in the store, and I don't have a problem with it, mind you, but um, I think there's a possibility um, it could be religious, um, because the fifth song is Cain and Abel, so it could be religious, not sure. Blind buys, you know? <clears throat> now, I'm feeling stupid because I'm drawing a blank on, on what band this is from, so the... Uh, the first person to to shout it out gets my my thanks. <laughs> uh, Donald Fagan. I cannot remember what band he was in. Um, uh, and this is his album, Kama Kyriad, Kyriad, Kama Kyriad. Donald Fagan. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Uh, now this is uh, from 1993. Steely Dan, yes, Steely Dan. Autumn got it. <laughs> Thank you, Autumn. Um, usually Matt is all over those answers, but <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, Steely Dan. And I should know. I mean, I have several, several of their albums. So, but you know, I'm getting old. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll be curious to hear that uh, from 1993. So, you know, it's reasonably after um, their popularity. Um, here we have, uh, th this is, I think, more for my, like, world music collection. Well, yeah, I think there's been a couple in there that have been that way. But uh, this is Los Super 7, Canto. Um, it says, a musical journey from the new troubadours of Latin American song. And, uh, oh, <laughs> Matt says he couldn't remember either. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> but Autumn got it. All right, Autumn. <laughs> um, so here we have, um, it says, Los Super 7 are David Hidalgo. Cesar Rosas, Ruben Ramos, Rick Trevino, I've heard of him, uh, Raul Malo, and I don't know if anybody here knows Spanish, but it's my understanding that Malo means bad. Caetano <laughs> um, uh, Veloso and Sus Susana Baca. And doesn't Baca mean cow? <laughs> um... Yeah, it says the highly, 
highly anticipated follow-up to the 1998 Grammy-winning album, 12 Brand New Recordings. It's on the, the little hype sticker there. Yeah. All right, so that was it. Uh, 17 CDs. Um, with tax, it actually ended up being basically 17. So, um, yeah, very cool. Um, <laughs> oh, so so Autumn said that she hated Steely Dan, and and Matt says, "OMG, Autumn, from hero to zero, right there." <laughs> that is too funny. Um, anyway, um, I'm probably gonna start wrapping up this video. I'm trying to keep these live videos a little shorter so that people can watch them back or will be more likely to watch them back. Um, but I was having an interesting discussion on, uh, on Facebook about YouTube videos in the vinyl community. Um, I'll, I'll get to your, your question there in a moment, Tom. Um, <clears throat> so basically the, I, I feel like there's, there's two schools of, of, people that watch um, vinyl community YouTube videos. Um, people, people that like to see vinyl finds or music finds and people that prefer like uh, a little more information and background and that sort of thing. And they, they tend to be into the more into the reviews and, and kind of, um, recent listens, that sort of thing. Um, because most of what I film are, are finds videos. Um, that's what I enjoy making. Um, but I'm realizing there's some people out there that just don't like this kind of video. <laughs> um, of me showing a bunch of blind buys, you know, and not knowing much about them. Um, so I would be interested to hear people's thoughts on that. Um, but... I do see a trend of more people showing what they've recently listened to rather than what they're finding in, in digs. Um, so it's, it's an interesting trend. Um, and it wasn't like that when I first started doing these videos, but I, I basically said, you know, I, I, first and foremost, I do these videos for myself and it's kind of a way of, of my sort of, uh, cataloging my collection. Um, and I, I do actually go back and, and watch the videos occasionally. Um, it's very interesting. Um, oh, all right. Matt has to go. Well, th thanks for joining me, Matt. Um, and Autumn says, uh, digging is getting costly, especially for vinyl collectors. That is true. That is true. And I think that's one reason I'm, I'm picking up CDs more, because CDs are, are still pretty unpopular. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm not going to get out of collecting vinyl. I, I love the format too much. Um, but it has, in the thrift stores, it's getting harder and harder to find, um, good stuff. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, I, I love doing these finds videos, and, and I, I do buy a lot of, you know, blind buys, so I can't really talk about the music, because I haven't heard it yet, <laughs> and apparently a lot of people don't like that. Um, well, not a lot, but some. Um, I actually had someone comment on my, my YouTube channel that uh, he, he gave me a thumbs down on a video because I wasn't talking about the music and I was just showing stuff. Um, um, what I'm just saying it's getting harder for dealers and stores to find decent variety. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe they're focusing more on new, on new releases. Um, 
and it's getting harder to find, you know, the old stuff. So that, that I can agree. I can agree with you there. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, but for me, it, it, it's about, you know, I like to show stuff, whether or not I know anything about it. Um, if I happen to know something about something and I, you know, I share the information, that's great. But <laughs> more often than not, I'm showing blind buys or stuff I'm not all that familiar with. I might know the name of the artist or something. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's interesting to see this, this trend forming and slightly dis discouraging at the same time because the way I, I buy music and I, I want to, you know, show it all, basically, that's kind of the point for me. Um, it just wouldn't be practical if I had to listen to it all first and then show it. it <laughs> I, I told someone on Facebook that, you know, I bought 17 CDs and if I, you know, it'd take me a few weeks to listen to those. You know, because, I mean, that's not all I'm going to be listening to, obviously. And so then, to weeks later, do a video. I don't know. To me, it... it and, of course, in the meantime, I would, <laughs> I would be, you know, buying more music. So then, you know, there's a backlog. And I did that when I used to do hardcore editing on my videos. And I got backlogged, and now I have, like... I think dozens of videos I never released. Um, I'm very gradually uh, posting them this once in a while, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, now I'm babbling, so and I I wanted to keep this short. <laughs> um, but I I don't know. I I just love music. I I love curiosity items like this. I mean. I guarantee you, I will never, ever, ever see this record out in the wild again. I mean, it has to be rare. <laughs> and I'm not thinking of, like, the value. I'm just thinking, you know, it's better that I have this rather than, you know, someone that maybe, you know, they would end up junking it or something. I think, I think it's just cool to have curiosity items like that and fun really um having stuff in your collection that you can be fairly certain that no one else in the vinyl community has in their collection and i'm, I'm willing to bet no one in the vinyl community has ever even seen this before um so and if they have i mean i would be shocked <laughs> so i like i like things like that but anyway um, again, I'm, I'm babbling, but, uh, oh, yes, I was, uh, yes, sorry, Tom. <laughs> I did promise you I was going to answer your question. Um, he was asking if I'm excited for the holidays. Um, I am, but my, my wife will be quick to tell you that, uh, I have, I have issues with the passage of time. And by that, I mean... Um, the holidays seem to come up so quickly, and they seem like they're over even more quickly. I I don't feel like I can really enjoy it like I could when I was a kid. Um, but I am, I'm always excited for the holidays. Um, I, I love Thanksgiving, I love Christmas. Uh, New Year's is pretty okay, but, eh, you know. Um... But yes, I am. I am excited for the holidays. Um, I have, you know, some big ticket items on my wish list because we do a secret, secret Santa, so it's it's more possible to get bigger items. I think one of the big items I have on my list is uh, Pink Floyd's "The Wall," which I would definitely put in my top ten albums. Definitely. Um, I probably have like 20 albums in my top 10, <laughs> top 10, uh, list, but, um, I'm, once I have them all, cause I know there's at least a couple more that I need, um, once I have them all, I can like really pare it down to an, the exact 10, cause I think some that I've thought were in the top 10 
the more I think about it, they probably aren't, but, um, but hopefully I will get that for, for Christmas, um, I do have it on my, my wish list, um, I'm not, well, obviously I don't know who I'm paired with, we're, we're doing like a secret Santa type thing, using Elfster, so, yeah, but, yeah, to answer your question, I am very, I am very excited about the holidays, um, it's, <clears throat> it's just a great time of year, um, Uh, yeah. And yeah, you know, I mean, there's, you know, negative sides to it, too. Like, um, traffic is, like, nonstop crazy now. <laughs> it's, it's insane. Um, strangely enough, we went to the mall yesterday, and it wasn't, it wasn't insane or anything. Um... Tom just asked if I'm if I'm trying to pick up any Zappa. Um, I'm always <clears throat> kind of on the lookout for for Frank Zappa, and there's there's been some really close times um, where I had something in my hand, but based on other stuff I've bought, it just for one reason or another it hasn't made the cut, or maybe it's a little too pricey or something like that. Um, <clears throat> but I definitely, definitely need some Frank Zappa in my collection. Yeah, uh, I'm starting to think, Autumn is saying that there's been a ton of uh, Zappa reissues on CD. And I'm starting to think, you know, maybe that's the route to go, or, um, if I could get, like, a box set, that would be cool. Um, because sometimes box sets, uh, for CDs anyway you can get them quite reasonably actually so um i think another <clears throat> another music related item on my christmas wish list is the uh, and this will be of interest to uh, tom especially i think is the the monkeys um box set on cd uh it had I'm pretty sure it has all their albums as well, except for the most recent, of course. Um, yeah, so I would be so thrilled to get that because collecting the albums on vinyl, although ultimately that's what I like to do, it's very difficult to find them on vinyl in the wild. Usually you see, you know, the first couple albums and maybe a greatest hits. Um, but when I do find their albums, like, like Head, for example, when I find that, they either are in horrible condition or it's the wrong record inside. That happened, actually. I, I think I bought, it wasn't, it wasn't Head, it was, uh, it was Headquarters, I think. Um, I picked up a copy of that and it turned out it was the wrong monkeys record in there and it was a monkeys record i already had so yeah so that was kind of a lose lose situation anyway i have a hungry pup down here what time is it i don't know uh yeah it's a long wait it's nowhere near time for dinner <laughs> i think she just wants attention it's it's little agatha now Agatha wants attention. Let's let's put her on camera. Ugh. So this is little Agatha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Um. I'm sure the cat is off somewhere, but. Yeah. Yeah, doggo. <laughs> There she goes. Anyway, <laughs> so, all right, so I answered your question. Um, nah. <laughs> she, she, does, she does look a little bit like a lamb. Um, that was, Autumn was saying, I think you have a lamb. Um, when we get her trimmed, we call her a shorn sheep. 
Oh yeah, we we love our dogs. Um, they're they're just part of the family, and and they're the along with the cat are the the only kids we'll ever have. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I'll take I'll take uh, dogs and cat. Well, dogs anyway. <laughs> we love our cat, but I'll take dogs over over kids any day. So. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so thank you everybody for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully you found some of this interesting. Um, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.